Hello, viewers. Um, Matt Carricker here, and I've kept quiet way too long about all the major issues that have been going around lately. And people have been asking my opinions, and I've been dodging those, and because I didn't want you guys to know the true me, I didn't want you guys to hate me. But you know what? It's not right. I need to tell you guys. I, you guys have to know how I actually feel. You got to know the real me, and I'm gonna lose a lot of you. Like a lot of followers are not gonna want to be here with me anymore once you hear what I have to say. I'm gonna lose friends. I'm gonna lose money. You've been following the fake Matt and I want you to know the real Matt. It's time. It's time I just tell you how I really feel because I can't stand, I can't be quiet about this anymore. There you go. I don't care, I don't even care. There you go, that's it. That's the real Matt character. It feels good. Welcome to Militia Ranch, don't forget Get your all I want for Christmas is Pew's ugly Christmas sweater. It is linked in the description below. If you want to be cooler than all your friends this Christmas, I got you covered. Enjoy the video. Welcome to Demolition Ranch. I have something super cool for you guys today. This is the brand new CQB 50 cal. Okay, it's, it's actually not a CQB, but it looks like it would be, right? So right now it's, it's in CQB mode. We can easily turn it to sniper mode, just like this. <laughs> this, this is the GM6 Lynx. Uh, a very unique 50 cal. It is sort of CQB because it's a bullpup. As you can see, the magazine is back here behind the grip and trigger and everything. It shoots a 50 BMG, just like the Barrett. A big round out of a very, very unique gun. I actually just picked this thing up, uh, bought it. Um, I know hardly anything about it, except that the barrel retracts with every shot. So I can, you can lock it back just for storage. So this is just for storage. But every time you shoot, it goes boom, boom. Much like a howitzer, much like a tank which is pretty interesting. So we're gonna actually try this gun out and I'll show you a lot more about it. But first, we have an experiment we're gonna do with this video. And we're gonna need to work our way up to the 50 because this is a little bit, a little bit overkill. We'll be right back with the links, I promise. You guys may have noticed that all of a sudden, I'm tactical AF. It's just me, it's Matt, don't worry. I'm not an operator. This is a pair of gators. They're uh, really, expensive, very nice shooting glasses. This is a pair of Walmarts. As you can guess, they're like $10. These are like 300. So these are used by a lot of military, Navy SEALs like these things. And so I wanted to see how much more protection do you get from something that costs $300 versus something that costs $10, 30 times the cost over here. So we're gonna shoot both with a 50, not, not, not yet, we're gonna start small. Smart, small, smart, smear, smear, small. First up, we're using technology, the rail gun, which after that video, you guys, uh, all you nerds out there told me this is actually not a rail gun, it's a coil gun, because there's coils. My bad, you freaks. Just kidding, I love you. All right, we're gonna shoot the rail coil gun at the glasses. I'm just gonna kind of sweep them. This shoots a little metal disc, slower than a bullet, but could still do damage. Okay, I also don't have a red dot on, so. Oh my. Okay. That was sketchy, sketchy, but we got them both. I see one problem already. Um, hmm. Not good. I saw this one take a direct hit. I thought. I'm not seeing anything. This one for sure took a direct hit. Here's the lens. Actually looks fine. 
think we can probably get that back in there. Oh, it's got a little bit of, a little bit of the lens is messed up. Okay. She shall shoot again. It actually fell back out. Everything's fine with these $300 glasses that broke on the first shot on the easiest, wimpiest gun. Everything's fine. Same thing, we're gonna go a little slower this time so I can try to aim it right. Whoop. Okay. Okay, that was definitely a direct hit. This one looks the same. That same lens fell out. And then this one got hit on this lens. You can see it's separating a little bit, but still in there, still protecting your eyeballs for like $10. Let's step it up to something a little bit bigger. Next up, we're gonna step it up to this American 22 long rifle. And what we're gonna do is actually, I think a 22 would go straight through these. So we're gonna actually just test the ricochet or spalling from a 22. So it's going to come here straight to this plate, hit, and then whenever you hit a metal plate like this, it goes and spreads out in every direction. So it will throw stuff right here. Because you don't really buy protective eyewear to keep bullets from going into your eye. You keep it, you buy them to keep pieces of bullets and pieces of target and random things from flying back at you and going into your eye. So that's what we're testing here. Straight here, worst case scenario, you're right next to the thing that gets hit and it throws shrapnel at your eye. Will these things protect your balls? I think this will not penetrate those glasses. I saw it move back a little bit, so we are getting some hits. Expensive, cheap. You can see there's little bitty scratches on those lens, little bitty dents, but no penetration. So it was hitting, bouncing off. Both of these inside lenses were being hit, but not affecting your eyeballs. So we're gonna put them about in the same spot again where it'll hit, hit those lenses that are closest to the inside right there, and we'll see what happens with a slightly more powerful round. This is a gun that I've had for years and years and years. I got it, uh, I think when I was in college. It's a Ruger all-weather chambered in 17 HMR. For those who don't know, 17 HMR is like a 22 mag, but shooting a 17 caliber bullet. So it's shooting really fast, really hot, and uh, throw some spalling. So this piece of steel is actually kind of interesting because uh, Kentucky left this here. This is a weight vest plate. So it's not armored steel, which is why even a 17 is actually making dents in the steel. It's just regular, normal density, normal hardness steel. It hasn't been hardened like all the armored steel we normally shoot. So it's going in there, shooting stuff. This one has a little bit more damage. This one has actually quite a bit more. We got some, we got some big hits on that one, but nothing has gone through to the eyeballs yet. So good to go there taking that shrapnel like a champ. So let's move it up to something a little bit more powerful now. Yeah, buddy. Next up, this is my KP9. It's a nine millimeter AK variant. And we just stuck this thing on it. This is a Delta Tech SFH KP9, specifically made for the KP9, obviously. This thing is a flash hider, basically. And it does a really good job of that. We're gonna go ahead and shoot it today. And uh, let's just work it around these targets first. So. Let's go ahead and shoot our mild steel here. I'm gonna step behind our little barrier and we'll see what happens to the glasses. Whoa, that one got cooked. I think I am a little bit of an angle though, so let me hit the other one. Okay, they both got hit pretty hard by a nine millimeter. Okay, that lens just fell out. This actually looks pretty much the same. 
and this looks pretty much the same too. Both totally smooth on the inside. Nothing's coming through besides where this one just fell out. So, I don't know guys, I didn't want to do this, but I think we're gonna to have to get something more powerful. Sorry. Desert Eagle 50 AE going straight at that plate and we'll definitely hit those glasses. Knock the cinder block off the table. Here's one set of glasses. Not gonna be doing a great job of protecting your eyeballs anymore. Uh, let me find the other pair of glasses and all the lenses. Oh, here's a clear lens. That's that's good to have that. Oh, here's here's one lens for that one. Where'd the frames go? We'll be right back. We found everything. Here's this, but look how far this one flew. Walk with me a little bit, guys. Come on. How's everything going? Your day going well today? I'm just gonna keep coming this way because it went so freaking far. Here it is. That's a failure too. I mean, it it possibly took a like half of a 50 AE through it, so it's not surprising that it failed. But I'm not mad. I'm I'm just disappointed. Cheap one. Back in. Still ready for action. Expensive one. This was a side that did not get hit, but it's a side that's been popping out the whole time. So I think that one didn't get hit again. It just fell out. This side took a freaking big piece of shrapnel right there and a lot over here. Some came through down here too, I think. So this one had some pass through, obviously. It also bent our frame here and here. It got smacked. These were in the same spot on both sides. I'm just gonna say it. I think Walmart makes better glasses than Gators. Don't shoot the messenger, guys. I'm just giving you the facts. Next up, our beautiful test subjects, Harry and Skinny. They are going to model these glasses for us while we fire directly at their face with birdshot. The theory here is, will the birdshot stop on the parts that is protected by the glasses. I don't care about their faces, I just want their eyeballs to be good. Let's do it. We go straight at guy on the left face, but I, I mean, we're at a like, I don't know, 25 yards, so we may end up hitting both. Or we may shoot right over the top, wow. Okay, I aimed that one right in between both their heads and fired, so we'll see what happened. First, let's check the glasses. All our lenses have gone somewhere else. Skinny lost an eye, and this guy actually is protected. Look, he's got holes in his face down. Look, there's a BB in his lip right there. So he's got holes down here. He's got little pieces definitely hit him up here too. But his eyes, beautiful as ever. Yeah, this guy got pretty tore up. He was the one wearing gaiters. <laughs> this one had our, our cheap $10 glasses on. This one had our $300 glasses on. You know what, just I'll let you guys take that one where you want it. I'm gonna look for the lenses, but I don't know where the heck they are. I found half of a gator lens, and then I was like, where could the other half be? There it is. Oh, that's his eyeball. <laughs> There's some gator lens there. There's just pieces of brain and uh, yeah, gator lens falling out of his head. This, Never a good sign, I'm a doctor, and I know that, that that's not good. Here's what I was able to find. So as you can see, this one, yeah, that's bad. The other one, also very bad. Um, ripped apart, multiple, multiple things came through it. Ah, very bad. But our cheap ones, yeah, there's dents in it. You can see, but no penetration. This one got hit like four times, looks like, five times maybe. Nothing came through. This one got hit a little more, um, but also nothing came through. So this was the side they're hitting. It bounced them all out. They did fall out. The lenses definitely fell out. If these go back in, I mean, I'm, I don't want to say like they're better, but they're not worse.
good to go. I mean, I guess these are still functional. Like we still got to keep shooting at these. I don't, I don't think there's any reason to keep doing this. Birdshot took them out. Those are dead. But this, yeah, let's go ahead and get the 50 out. I bet it even stops at 50. After what I've seen, it's gonna stop at 50. This is the GM6 Lynx. Uh, I've not fired it yet. And it does this. Cool party trick. So that is its ready to fire configuration right there. I think the only thing left to do is to actually shoot it. I've watched a lot of videos of this thing firing. It is very interesting the way it works because that barrel comes back. So this is the dust cover. When you're firing, it stays open like that, which is actually crazy because you can see in here, you can see the, the brass, the, the, the next live cartridge is ready to go in the chamber. It's got a, a roller wheel here, which is crazy. It has a charging handle that falls back in. So to charge it, holy. So it actually pulls the whole barrel back, which is a lot of work because you're fighting not only this spring, but the barrel spring. It pulls the whole barrel back and then it lets the barrel go, which is strange. And then once you let go of this, it drops that next round into the chamber. Safety is super weird. It's this really big button right here. Very easy to push though. So when I'm ready to fire, just kind of lean on it like that. And now the safety is off and it's ready to fire. Uh, we have this little retractable foregrip up here. You have a retractable bipod over there. And that's pretty much all I know. I mean, I, I really don't know much about this at all, except it's awesome and I wanted to try it out. So we bought a Lynx just for you guys. All right, I'm gonna send around down range. This will be my first time firing the Lynx. Oh man. Here we go. Jeez. That kicks so much more than a Barrett. I don't know why either. Like the barrel moves a lot, but I thought it'd be more delayed, but it, the fireball's crazy. I could see just through my scope, a vi giant fireball. That was it. Cra okay, let's, let's go ahead and shoot another one. <laughs> right on the collarbone. It feels like Goldberg is just slapping you in the face every time you hit it. All right, let's do another one. It kind of felt good though. As much as I would like Goldberg to slap me in the face, let's go ahead and do it one more time. Oh my God. Uh, GM6 Link, you are a freaking crazy animal. One more, one more, I'm just, I'm feeling it. Let's hit that thing again. When you shoot through a Barrett, you don't see a fireball. This one is just, my whole scope just turns to fire which I'm a fan of. Y'all didn't come here to watch me shoot this thing slowly though from a table. Let's shoot this thing standing. Ah, we're out. We've got to reload it. Uh, uh, tactical reload. Back in the fight. Hit. <laughs> this gun's a handful. Um, I forgot what this whole video is about. Now I just want to shoot this at random things. We have um, our friend down here, Harry, with the Walmart glasses on looking straight at a cinder block. So I was thinking like, what if we shot the cinder block and have it explode literally in his face with the 50 BMG firing. Let's go check on Harry and see if he's okay. I don't know where the glasses went, but it, he was right here. We passed the bullet right in here. It exploded this and threw him backwards. Um, all right, so I was gonna shoot the big one next. I didn't think the glasses would go that far that time. Be right back. Found them. Still good to go. We got you, brother. All right, he's looking right at the center block. I'm gonna go right here, see if his eyeballs survive. Harry, you might wanna go ahead and engage safety squints as well for this one, buddy. Firing. Probably not good for him. Let's see what happened with those Walmart glasses.
His eyes are not doing well. Well, one of them is. Um, the other one, he's probably gonna go need to see an ophthalmologist. <laughs> uh, found this eyes, and it's fine. Dusty, but looks fine, and that's why it protected his eyes so well. I only found this side. I don't know where this side of the glasses or his face went. So basically, with our science experiment today, we found out that expensive glasses might as well be wearing nothing at all. But Walmart glasses can stop everything up to a 50 PMG. Jeez. Oh. Well, let me know if you guys like my links. Uh, I think we can do a lot of fun stuff with it. Also, we have some new sweatshirts just in time for Christmas. We made a limited quantity of these, so limited time only. Link in the description below. If all you want for Christmas is pews, we can hook you up. Well, I guess you need to have uh, pews and a sweatshirt that talks about it. That's how, that's all you actually need for Christmas. But link in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I would do my normal outro where I yell at you, but I've kind of lost my voice. So uh, we're going to keep this one classy, guys. Uh, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for being here. And um, we would love to see your beautiful face on the next one. Um, if you happen to be able to come by, uh, I would love to talk to you then. And um, thanks for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>